high reading friends um, back because of course I'm doing like, you know, two challenges in December. Um, if you've already seen the winter quest challenge, then you'll know I'm doing a short less is more challenge that is a sort of tag along to the bookie trials that I did earlier this year. Um, it's a, it's literally less is more like the fewer books you read, the better. And I got it all down to two books for 11 prompts. I think I'm covering 10 books with, or 10 prompts with one book, and then one book takes care of the other prompt that the first one didn't cover. So I'm kind of excited about that. Uh, but the other thing I'm doing is not so much a book review as it is a, or a book challenge as it is a review challenge. The amazing Megan Tennant, whose book Alethea is actually among one of my favorites that I discovered this year, I think, or late last year, um, has done this really fabulous challenge, at least last year, she's doing it again this year, to promote independent authors. When indie authors publish, they rely on reviews on websites like Amazon and Goodreads and places like that and blogs to help promote their books because they don't have a big publishing house doing book tours and buying ads on social media and things like that. So um, this is really more about reviewing books that you've already read or reading books and then reviewing them. So my understanding is that I can sneak in and review some, but I haven't read, I'm hoping. Because one of the things, this is a bingo chart, and one of the, um, several of the spots are the number of reviews you've done. So there's one for when you've done up to nine reviews, another one for when you've done 10 to 29, 30 to 60, and over 60. I really hope I'm not expected to read 60 books. But I can certainly get close to that with a number of indie books I've read that I have never done reviews on. Because I didn't used to, I do them a lot now, but I didn't used to. That's kind of a new thing this past year. Um, so I've picked up my books now. This is a disclaimer. To the best of my knowledge, all these books I've chosen are by indie authors. Some of them I absolutely know they are. Others, I think from everything I've been able to find, they're indie. Um, I can't find a, a publishing house connected to them. And I know a lot of times um, your, your websites will contain whatever publishing house you work with or that you're contracted to or whoever published your last books. Um, so I'm hoping that, that I've done my due diligence to try to figure out if these are all indie authors. So I'm hoping I'm close. Um, you're going to see the same name show up a couple of times, like I think three times I'm doubling up. So obviously um, there are authors that I've read in almost in every case, in all three cases, there are authors I've read before that I liked. So when I found more books that fit these prompts, I jumped on it. Um, the first one is Red. You said right on the cover. Um, this is actually the third book in a series. I just read the first book. The second book is also fits one of the in December prompts. Um, but this is the third book and it happens to fit the uh, book with a red cover. Ruins of the Lost World by C.K. Birch. Um, kind of a um, Indiana Jones, King Solomon Pines, the librarian kind of adventure going after artifacts kind of story. Um, the fun thing is the name, the person who edited this book is somebody that I actually knew when she was in high school. So it's kind of fun for me because I don't know the author, but I know someone who knows the author, which is fun. Um, just because I'm weird like that. Um, the next block is for 30 to 60 reviews. That'll come later. Um, released in 2019. Now, I will say I'm going to give her a shout out. People get tired of me mentioning her, but I'm a proud mom. Um, my daughter, Margaret Adele, is a booktuber, and she did a great recommendation video for those that want to do in December with, um, in some cases, two or three titles for several of the prompts. Um, so a lot of these I stole right off of her video because she's the indie queen in my family. That's all she does is indie reviews on her booktube. Um, so this is one from her, The Dead Remnant. Um, I love the the tag. It says, in the Wild West afterlife, she's in distress, but she's no damsel by Armana Forbes. The cover's gorgeous. I'm kind of excited. Wild West afterlife is intriguing. Um, that takes care. Non-Western inspired. This is another one from my, recommended by my daughter. Cenote City by Monique Quintana. Um, I just like the cover. I think it's fun. Um, this author is one. Um, you're supposed to read a book with gold or silver on the cover. Um, I'm, it's a series. You're, you're going to find that all of these are on my Kindle. All of these are ebooks that I have. Um, this is this is a series that I have. I'm going to read the first book. But I've also read this author before. Um, I read a book by her called Warrior Mage, which was awesome. So I'm excited to find more of her stuff to read. Um, this is a series called Agents of the Crown. I'm going to be reading the first book, Eye of Truth. A book with gold or silver on the cover. Obviously, the title's all in gold, and so is the little logo, so I'm good. Um, in the next row on the bingo chart, we have 10 to 29 reviews. Again, I just got to get the reviews written. A dystopian or post-apocalyptic, again, this comes recommended by my daughter, Until the End of the World by Sarah Lyons Fleming. I know nothing about it other than it's post-apocalyptic. It's the first in the series. Um, comedic. This one is called Duckett and Dyer Dicks for Hire. 
The premise of it is duck it and buy or find advertisements for a detective agency using no names, but they're, they didn't put the ads up. They didn't put the flyers up. So sounds kind of funny. Um, fantasy, um, another one recommended by my daughter. I can find a picture. Prince Norel, Edge of Shadows um, by J.T. Harris. I believe that's the first in the series, if I'm not mistaken. I think Margaret also mentioned that she's reading the second in the series for that one. Uh, Pomegranate. This is the book based on a myth. Myth inspired, I believe. This is the Persephone's and Hades myth. Um, inspiring this book, Pomegranate by Nicole Scarano. This one I've already read, but I am going to review it. For some reason, I never reviewed it, which seems insane to me that I went and checked every place that I write reviews. And I never reviewed this one, which is nuts because I loved it. I absolutely adored this book. It's by Mark Secchi. It's called The Pygmy Dragon. First in the series. Um, she's a pygmy who doesn't know she's a dragon until she's rescued by one and taken to this training school and discovers she's a pygmy and a dragon, which makes her really, really unique. Um, and, and so she has to learn how to control this shape sh shape shifter part of her life when she had no clue she was one. Um... Self-help educational. I've read this book. Um, again, didn't review it. And I go back and read it periodically. I've had a chance to interact with this author on um, Facebook and social media. Um, the, the title is Becoming an Intentional Life, um, written for women of faith and, and uh, as a marriage helps kind of thing. Definitely different than a lot of the books I've read for wives. Um, this talks about, as the title implies, this talks about intentionality in your choices and how you talk to your husband and how you interact with him. Um, definitely not your typical Marriage Helps book. The next block on the, the bingo board calls for you to gift a book. I'm holding off on that one because I have to find somebody to gift it to and I have to pick a, one that I really, really like and, and sort of match up a great book with a, a reader that I know. Um, so I'm, I'm leaving that one alone for a minute. The next block calls for you to read a naughty romance, an erotica. Uh, this one comes recommended from a friend, my best friend's brother by Alexis Winter. Apparently she, this author, is the queen of this genre. I don't know, but this comes highly recommended by a friend who's into that genre. So we'll see. Um, the horror, this is one of the authors that I did a lot of research on to confirm that she's an indie author, and I think she is. Um, she's actually an immigrant from Poland. Um, Shadow City by Anna Mo Mochikat, I think is how you pronounce the last name. I did my best. Um, she's also working on the sequel to this one, so I'm intrigued. Um, a place where villains become heroes, and heroes are not what they seem. There's no light, and there's no dark, holy shadows. So I'm intrigued. Um, very definitely described by some of the reviewers um, that I read as a horror post-apocalyptic mix, which should be fun. Um, the next one is a contemporary. I read this one just recently. I did not review it on purpose because I knew in December was coming, and I related so hard to this book. It's the beginning of a series called The Mount Hope Southern Adventures. It's called Walking Shoes by Lynn Gentry, um, a pastor's wife, which is, I've been one for years. Um, she's watching her husband preach on a Sunday morning when he drops dead in the pulpit of a heart attack. Um, and She's dealing with um, busybody know-it-alls who have always wanted to tell her how to run her life. The picture of the shoes on the cover is because she bought this really sassy pair of red shoes with bows. And she's afraid to wear them because people will talk about the pastor's wife wearing sassy red shoes. Um, and I wish I was kidding that that kind of stuff really does happen in churches to some pastor's wives. Uh, not all, but some. Um, but it's her coming to terms with losing her husband, going back into the workforce, what does it mean for the fact that she lives in a church-owned parsonage? Um, her relationship with her adult children has been strained, and so she has to call them and tell them that their dad's gone, and um, the conversations that they have trying to find a normal for a, a mother of adult children who aren't all necessarily locked into the same belief system again. So it's a really good book. Um, pretty light read, but contemporary, and for somebody like me who is a pastor's wife with adult children, um, I related to the main character hard, but it's the first in a series. I probably will pick up the rest of the series and read it just because I found her to be so believable. Um, I've mentioned this author's name once before. I gotta find the book. I think it's in your open list. Um, this is the sci-fi book. Um, it's called Star Nomad by Lindsay Baroker. I already mentioned her once. Um, the Agents of the Crown series that I'm reading for the book with gold and silver on it. Um, I also, like I said, read Warrior Mage, which um, smatterings of like the Chinese samurai culture, the Chinese warrior culture, um, along with a little bit of fantasy thrown in. So uh, I really like her writing. I've, I've enjoyed her a lot as an author, so I'm looking forward to reading um, a slightly different book, a sci-fi book, because the last thing I read by her was fantasy. Um, romance, this one intrigues me big time. Um, sorry, these pictures are a little bit out of order. 
Um, it's a, it, it, the, the author himself or herself, sorry, describes it more as fan fiction um, than anything else. It's called Made for the Musketeer by Anna Klein. He is the son of Comte de Medici and has been in love with his, his childhood best friend for years, Charlotte. Um, his family is, gets caught up in, in, in accusations of treason and all of this kind of stuff. Um, and Charlotte loses the chance to be with him and her life takes a really bad turn. She ends up married to a guy she can't stand who later dies. And Richelieu later on during the era of the Musketeers offers these two a chance to be together if they'll do a job for him that's unsavory. Um, so I'm intrigued to see where this goes because by the, by the time they meet again, he, this, the character Gregor wants nothing more than to be a musketeer and she ends up a maid and he's sort of promised the chance to become a musketeer if he'll do this gig for Richelieu and if she'll help him, Richelieu will bless them getting married and, you know, make it happen. So um, I'm intrigued, but it's a, it's a good old fashioned romance. Um, this next one is by two authors, one of whom I have read before and I actually, he shows up I think he only shows up once on this, but I have read him before. Um, Melt by J.J. Pike and Mike Krause. That's a great cover. I just love the artwork on that cover. It's really, really detailed. Um, it's the mystery or thriller book. Um, and then the next box in that line for the bingo is 0 to 9 reviews. So that'll be the first one I get to cross off when I write a review. Um, this next book needs to have white and blue on the cover. I have read this one already, but I did not review it. So I will be reviewing it for this, for this challenge. I have already read it. I just need to go back and brush the cobwebs off my brain. I read it not too long ago, since the summer, maybe. It's called Blood Crescent by S.M. McCoy. Um, I seem to have gotten lately hooked into a lot of paranormal fantasy, and this is one of those. Um, novella or poetry. This is an author I read quite a while ago. I've never really reviewed any of the books. I put a quick, I really liked it, review on one of the books, which sucks and isn't enough. So I'm going to go back and re-review it. Um, but she needed to read a book that was novella or poetry. This is the prequel novella, <coughs> excuse me, Tremors, by Bonnie S. Calhoun. It's part of the Stonebreak Chronicles story, which I read the entire series, but never reviewed any of them, which is really odd. So I've got two of them on the In December bingo card. Uh, over 500 pages. You've already seen book three in this series. This is book two, The Curse of the Iron Skull, the Dustin McCallan adventure. Um, it's book two in the series. Book three was listed as the book that has read on the cover. So I'll be reading both of those and finishing that series out. I'm excited. Um, I, I even got my husband a little bit intrigued to, to try to read them because, um, I said, I told him they remind me a lot of that Clive Cussler genre, which my husband I know has read. So that kind of Dirk Pitt, if you're a Clive Cussler Dirk Pitt fan, this is the book for you. Uh, but this was over 500 pages. This one's 511 on my Kindle. Um, the next box on my bingo sheet sheet is for 60 reviews which we'll see um and then the last very last book on my list is another one in the, a, a series i've already mentioned um green on the cover this is the first book in the stonebird chronicles thunder um like i said tremors is sort of the prequel thunder i think came out first and then they went back and wrote this novella to sort of set up the first book um so i'm excited um like i said some of these i believe if i understand the purpose right that it's more about reviewing the books than it is about reading them in the month of December. Um, Cause there's no way there's 60 books on this sheet. And, and you're, so one of the boxes is to write over 60 reviews for indie books online. So um, like I said, I've done as much research as I can to prove that these authors are indeed indie. Uh, there's just a couple of books on here. I'm not going to three books. I think that I'm not going to really need to reread because I've read them recently enough that I just need to go back and look at the characters and brush the cobwebs out of my brain. Um, but the rest of them are all going all to be new reads to me or reads that I need to reread like Thunder and Tremors. I read probably two or three years ago. So I need to go back and reread those um, to brush the, the, the cobwebs out of my brain big time and remember what the story was all about. But the majority of them are brand new to me um, or books that I haven't read in a while and will gladly reread um, because I never wrote a review for them. So I encourage you to check out in December. I will put the link um, to Megan's Twitter feed on, uh, on the comments. Um, she doesn't do a separate Twitter for in December. She just uses the hashtag. Um, so she has you use hashtag in December. Um, but yeah, I, I encourage you to go out there and support independent authors. Make December the month that you focus on um, supporting and helping to build um, the customer base for indie authors who are trying to um, 
bring their dreams to life without the um, use of a big publishing house. So have a great day and let me know in the comments what books you're reading. And if you have any favorite indie authors, throw them down there too. Thanks.